Hello, welcome again to the LAMC 2013. I'm Catalina Maria Johnson on behalf of Beat Latino and Gozamos. I have with me Mr. Furia and DJ Nino, all the way from Barcelona, Cierto Catalanes, from Catalonia, Spain, all the way here. Uh, to talk about their new project, which is, I've loved what you've done for a long time, but this is particularly special. This is a an, an, an very beautiful and unusual project, so tell us more about Flor and Rolf, in English or Spanish, lo que prefieran. Bueno, um, the project of Flor and Rolf uh, was born as a, as a certain need, as a parent, no? because, uh, well, uh, you know, years go by and you, you form a family, and, uh, but you still are a musician, so um, and when you start... Pinkertoncitos? <laughs> tenemos Pinkertoncitas. <laughs> Pinkertoncitas. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Manso tiene dos Pinkertoncitas y yo tengo dos más. Entonces, eh, la cosa es que pensamos, bueno, ¿cómo...? Hay que hacer algo en este sentido porque empezamos a buscar música para enseñar a nuestras hijas y encontrábamos cosas muy buenas, pero también encontrábamos cosas muy malas, ¿no? Entonces notamos que faltaba mmm, música, sobre todo que ayude a los padres a escuchar la música con sus hijos, porque normalmente los padres se aburren con la música de niños, ¿no? Entonces buscamos una fórmula de compromiso, de something in between, ¿no? something mm -hmm. that parents mm -hmm. and children would like and and uh, share mm -hmm. no? and have a, a you know a family experience wow. so we came up with with the idea of uh, doing a, a CD book uh, and not only make like a children's CD which is like oh we'll do you know one song about colors and one song about animals and one song about I don't know the you know but whatever no about dancing and clapping your hands so we will what we always do or try to do is, as the Pinkertones, and which is a trademark as well, is that we like to tell stories. So we wrote the, the whole book and the songs so that the songs actually articulated the story and every song is a step forward in the story. So there's spoken word and the song and a bit more of spoken word. And that's also in the book. No? So the spoken word is part of the tracks? Like if you... On each track, there's some spoken word? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Who's doing the reading? Uh, I do Rolf, uh -huh. and uh, Flor is played by a, a London actress, brilliant woman uh, called Mimi Miller. Um, she's a fantastic actress and singer, uh, and obviously we needed somebody that was not only um, a good performer, a good singer, but also somebody who had like the acting skills to perform as a New York Latina girl. Oh, no? wow. Wow, wow. So because the story is also incorporates a bit of our biography, you know, the mm -hmm. thing of, wow, when, when we arrived to the States, the, we, we gained a lot of perspective of us being part of the Latin movement, which we didn't have before coming here, no? I, not everybody agrees about uh, Spain being, I'm just teasing, <laughs> <laughs> being part of the Latin movement. No, I don't. Yeah. But I think that, yeah, pan, so of kind of a pan-Latino consciousness. See, exactly. Wow. That like being part of, and uh, that's because we, we were very warmly invited to be part of that and lots of um, Latin alternative artists and not and some Latin not alternative artists suddenly started to show a lot of respect um, and we've ended up through this working with people like I don't know like um, Eric Bobo from Cypress Hill he played on one of our albums and uh, we did a remix for him and we've been you know exchanging material with a lot of people so that's also we wanted to make a pay a little bit of tribute to the Latin community here in the States which you know without that welcome we had in the in 2006 when we came to the LAMC for the first time we probably wouldn't have a career in the states so we we thought well they they deserve a special mention in this so we came up with the idea of telling the story of uh, of Flor who is you know a latina girl from New York City who is probably we don't know exactly but she's probably like second or third generation latina so she sings in english and the boy from Barcelona, Rolf is, um, uh, is on the other side of the book and the ocean. <laughs> we have Rolf, who is a, a half-German kid from Barcelona. 
and you may have noticed he wears big glasses and uh, uh -huh. we, we are hard but, but you need to do the hair thing <laughs> that's Manso's hair that's yes. Manso's hair yeah. right. so DJ it's not your hair and it doesn't <laughs> no so tell us a little bit tell me a little bit DJ about your participation in the uh, in the project in the Rolf and Flor well, project well I'm Mr. Furia's brother so are I have really? been yes. seriously <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so we are both uh, half German kids from Barcelona. You are both half German kids from Barcelona. We are. This is really our mother this, is German. This is really this a is true, true story. <laughs> yeah. This is so not another. No, 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 no this is this is. Oh wow! <laughs> so Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ah ja. Wir haben beide. Natürlich. Oh. Um, so there was Wunderbar. a. Uh, there's a thing of. Uh, I mean, we feel. I, I felt very identified also with with all this because for us, growing up in Barcelona with three different languages, because we have Spanish, we have Catalan, and German. I think that all gave us conscious of how important it is to speak more than one language. Mm -hmm. It's it's just uh, this thing of you know, looking at the world from different perspectives and understanding other cultures and. And so, in this in this story, uh, we thought it was very um, healthy to show that in in this globalized world, where you know you could think that uh, Spain and America are completely different countries, you have right parallel stories right. of two kids That's who are great. in a similar situation, and through a series of things, there's a very strong connection between them. And well, my, my connection to the to the book is basically I, I we have very similar voices, so I, I always do the harmonies and and there's one track on this album which is a, a version of a, a, a 1920s uh, a cappella German band which was called the Comedian Harmonists. Um Papa? No, no, it's, no. They, they, a they were yeah. a little it's bit. A bit. <laughs> the, the Comedian Harmonists were the first the first band who introduced uh, vocal swing. Say the na their name again. The Comedian Harmonists. Comedian Harmonists. The Comedian Harmonists. They are from very, very a great, great wow. band, uh, and they, you know, unfortunately, they in 1935 they had to split up because three of them were Jews, and they came to America and had a career over here. Um, you can actually hear some of Comedian Harmonists' music in, for instance, Tom and Jerry. There's, there is, there are Comedian wow. Harmonists' wow. songs written into the, wow. into this, into the, into the scores. Uh, they they were they were like the revelers of Europe. They brought the the swing sound over, and they were like the first swing vocal swing uh -huh. band. In uh -huh. So wow. it, a bit like the 1930s Beatles. <laughs> and so every every German family uh, who's who a bit is. you know forward looking that's that's like a very important band, no? Because it symbolizes um, you know the the respect for for you know, uh, for multiculturalism and uh, in, in a very early stage, which you know was. Uh, with this tragic end because of the of the Nazis, oh. no. So every every German family has, uh, you know, the comedian harmonists deep in their heart. It, <laughs> it has a lot of humor. Yeah, it has a lot of humor to it, and it's I don't know. It's kind of listening to the Beach Boys, but back in <laughs> 1920s, you know. It's okay. Well, but it was not children's music, right? Not necessarily. Although well, Tom and Jerry. The song we chose for this album worked perfectly well because it is a very uh, comic song. Uh, which is basically the only kind of song they could do at their late stage because oh. they were still allowed to go but they couldn't sing certain things so they went to do a very uh, very simple and funny song now everybody's uh, got bumps on their heads yes that's because <laughs> the the cactus uh, fell from the balcony uh -huh. uh, and fell on, on the neighbor's head, and then the neighbor goes and uh, says, "Well, um, you know, we should put this cactus somewhere safe. No, not not on the balcony because it just fell on me." Right. Uh, so. Now this is interesting because you you sing in Spanish in the CD only in Spanish. Uh, uh. On on the CD, yeah. Uh, I sing the Spanish CD uh -huh. as Rolf. But I also play the character of Mario, the the Italian ice cream man, <laughs> and so I'd sing ice cream, <laughs> and which also is based on the idea of the classic Chris Barber track, of ice cream, uh, you scream, <laughs> we scream for ice cream. So. You know the other thing that's uh, amazing about uh, the book, which as I see it, I hadn't noticed till now, is this. So so it's bilingual, English and Spanish, mm -hmm. but then there's also this color theme, you know. She's mm. in blue, exactly. and the artist is, and he's in yellow, but there's mm. blue around him. 
that there's a beautiful color scheme and, and the artist must be amazing. Miguel Gallardo, right? Miguel Gallardo is like this is this is like a dream come true for us yeah. to work with Miguel Gallardo because he is one of the biggest comic authors of our generation, um, not from our generation, but from when we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. He had uh, Makoki is one of his most famous characters, and it's like the comics we read as teenagers. So, it, uh, and we've been following. Yeah, underground? A very underground, but then he started to be an illustrator. I mean, uh, he illustrates for the New Yorker and, and uh, I was everywhere say, around the world. There was something familiar about it, so yes, I thought. Yes, you I might have you certainly have seen his stuff in the New Yorker, New York Times. He's, he's great. And I he just. He's done a lot of children's books as well. Uh, oh, has he? Um, I just realized something too. Um, Rolf and Floor. Rolf is floored backwards. Yes. <laughs> and Flor is Rolf backwards. Exactly. Very good. Palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a palindrome, Capicua in Espanol. Capicua, yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> luck. Also, that's fascinating. So you chose that too. To What yes. was the point? I'm sure there was a point. This is very well thought out. Well, since since we were telling the story of... Las difíciles para el hermano mayor, ¿no? Since we had the... Um, the, this idea of a story which was very yin and yang no like we wanted to do like mirror images of something that happens in america has a mirror image in a kid of spain no and that uh, communication is possible like transatlantic and not only possible but but desirable no so uh, and then when they find each other they they notice that they have a lot in common probably even more that some with some of their classmates no, because both of them, Rolf wears glasses, Flor wears braces, so they're a bit like, oh, you know, the kid that's a bit strange in the class and that, you know, is a bit, you know, has a bit of freaky... The uh, nerds. <laughs> a bit of nerdy kid, yes. So they have a lot in common, and that, that's also something that's, that's very important to us and that we found out through our traveling. No? That, uh, there's a possibility, even in, the, in this very cold globalization, to create magic, no. Let's let's use this situation uh, in a positive way, no. So if if we have to live in a future in a future globalized world, we need to start, you know, knowing more about each other. We need to learn to speak languages and uh, see that we might have in common a lot with a kid from another city, you know, uh, anywhere in the world. So, for instance, no, we we have friends in in Shanghai that we have more in common than that with my neighbor next door no so that i think that's the positive thing of globalization no? well wonderful you've uh, you've created musical magic for a long time so <laughs> this is another example and and how wonderful to be able to have you know a generation i, I very much hope that we have a generation of kids mm -hmm. that grow up on Rolf and Flor. Well, yesterday we had a, a really moving moment because we, we played the first Rolf and Flor show uh, at the Museo del Barrio in Spanish Harlem. And suddenly, like one of our first fans in America, a girl <laughs> who came there to the very first concert and to said, Oh, I've, to, I mean, every show we've done in New York, she has always come and she suddenly appeared with her daughter, oh. Amelia. And we were like, Oh, and they, they enjoyed it so much. And it's like, okay, this is the next generation of Pinkertons fans are there. Right no? there. And it happens a lot. I mean, we've been 12 years around, so a lot of the people who started uh, listening to us when they were 30 or 20-something, they are now all parents. And uh -huh. so it's, uh, I mean, ourselves. No? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to... I have uh, nephews that are two years old, so I can't wait. To share this with them, <laughs> and they're being brought up with uh, Spanish and English. So amazing. Vielen Dank. Bitte schön. And Schuss. Take care. Nice to, nice. I had no idea about the German part, so well, that's great to know. We always unveil a new little Pinkerton secret in every new visit. I know that's not available wiki wise, so that's great. <laughs> Pinker Leaks. Pinker Leaks. <laughs> Thank you so much.